I may be a time management coach, but I have a secret to share. Productivity hacks won't completely turn your life around. I know, I know, that's not what you're expecting from someone who lives and breathes productivity. Don't get me wrong, some of those hacks are great. On one hand, they can help you free up a little bit of time here or there. They can make your life a little bit easier and help you understand how to manage your time better. On the other hand though, using a bunch of random productivity hacks isn't the same thing as having a solid system or a strategy in place. A strategy like my heart method, which I'll talk about a little later. Be sure to stick around so you can hear what that is. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, think of productivity hacks as the icing on the cake. Well, actually, they're more like the sprinkles on the icing on the cake. They're nice to have, and they can make a difference in how you spend your time. I mean, who doesn't like sprinkles on their dessert every now and then? Today, we'll talk about seven productivity hacks that you can start using today, plus the system you need to make time management really work for you. Number one, drink a glass of water as soon as you wake up in the morning. Okay, I know this doesn't seem like a productivity tip, but really it is. We could all hydrate a little better. Studies have shown that drinking water first thing in the morning helps you think more clearly, improves your health, and fires up your metabolism. On the flip side, not drinking enough water can lead to poor concentration, anxiety, fatigue, and sleepiness. I like to fill up a tumbler with a lid and put it on my nightstand the night before. That way I see it first thing in the morning, so it's easy to remember. Before you have that first cup of coffee in the morning, have a glass of water first. When you have a glass of water before anything else, you'll start your day rehydrated and re-energized. And don't forget to start your day by hitting that subscribe button so I can get a little energy boost too. Hack number two, turn off your notifications. Let's talk about notifications for a second. Did you know that Americans who work behind a computer screen are on average hit with a distraction every 43 seconds? That's incredible. It's also not surprising with how much we depend on technology these days. I talk about simplifying your tech usage in an episode if it's about time that I'll be sure to link down in the description. So that's an email, a text message, a Slack message, a beep, buzz, or a ding every 43 seconds. Plus, after you've been interrupted, it can take almost 30 minutes to regain your concentration. So that's why I say turn off your notifications or as many as you can. This hack helps you stay focused and get things done because one, you don't see the notification. So you're not tempted to stop what you're doing and scroll on your phone or browse your desktop. Two, you're not context switching. And that's exactly what it sounds like. Hopping from program to website to social media lightning fast. When you avoid context switching, you can actually concentrate, get in a groove, and feel good about getting stuff done. Here's how I put this hack into practice myself. The only notifications I have turned on on my phone are phone calls, my girls' daycare apps, and text messages, kind of. My girls' daycare uses two apps, ProCare and Photo Circle uh, to send messages to keep in touch and to share photos throughout the day. I honestly could turn those notifications off too because if there's a real emergency, they'll call. But I kind of don't mind the interruption of getting the messages and cute photos throughout the day. This is a reminder that notifications don't have to be urgent or work-related to stay on. They can be fun too. As for text messages, I actually keep notifications on via my Apple Watch. If it's urgent, I can respond fast. If it's not, I can wait until I finish what I'm doing to get back to the message. This means I don't have to pick up my phone and unlock it in order to read the message and potentially get distracted by a million other things. I encourage you to take stock of your current notifications, consider turning them all off, and then only turn on the ones you actually need. If you're constantly blowing up, turn off your notifications and set a 15 minute text message time block in your calendar every 90 minutes. Get in, get out, and get on with your work. Now remember, your notifications might look different from someone else's because it all depends on how you communicate. So don't feel bad if you turn everything off 
or if you leave more on than you expected because that's what you need to stay connected. All right, hack number three. Choose your top three for the day. Productivity hack number three is also a priority hack. When you've got a long list of projects with lots of parts and pieces and deadlines, choosing what to work on first or next can make your head spin. Some days you might make a ton of progress on one project, but your other tasks kind of collect dust, which then stresses you out. Other days you might make tiny progress on a bunch of different projects, but you're skip hopping from project to project and you just end up kind of making a little bit of a mess. The progress is so small and spread out that it's barely noticeable. Or let me know if this sounds familiar in the comments. You start your day with a to-do list that has 17 things on it and you only get around to doing 10 of them, but those 10 weren't actually what was most important. Then you feel like crap for not getting the important things done. It doesn't have to be this way. Instead, start your workday by choosing the top three things you must get done that day. This doesn't mean that you're only going to do those three things, but it does mean that you're going to start your day by assessing your projects and prioritizing. Make sure to check out my YouTube video on priorities versus productivity to learn more about choosing what's most important to you. I have linked it in the description below. So there are three ways you can use this hack. Write your top three at the top of your planner page for the day. When you complete one, draw a line through it or go crazy and add a sticker next to it. Celebrating small wins keeps you motivated to keep winning. Write your top three on a sticky note and stick it up where you'll see it while you work. I use cute little sticky note pads I find in Target for this. Write each one of your top three down on its own sticky note and after you finish it, pull it down and toss it until they're all gone. With this hack, you're being strategic and proactive. You're thinking through what's most important and urgent. You're starting your day with intention and you're moving through your day with intention. But wait, what about everything else on your list after your top three? How do you prioritize those? Productivity hack number four can help. Write your entire to-do list on one sticky note. And I don't mean write 37 things in teeny tiny writing on a three by three square. I mean, limit your to-do list for the day to what can actually fit on a sticky note. Just like the previous hack, this one requires you to be strategic and intentional. If we're not careful, we'll put a bunch of stuff on our list that honestly doesn't have to be done that day. Limiting your space helps you choose intentionally what really needs to be done that day. It also keeps you from getting overwhelmed by a super long list. When you don't have a whole page to dedicate to your to-do list or unlimited pages in a Google Doc, you have to decide what your priorities are. Ready for productivity hack number five? Here we go. Be a maker in the morning and a manager in the afternoon. You're splitting your day into two parts to get different kinds of work done. Maker time is for large uninterrupted blocks of creating, writing, blogging, coding. You get the idea, head down, concentration, deep work kind of time. Maybe you're batch recording podcasts or YouTube videos. YouTube videos like this one. Don't forget to subscribe and like it. Maybe you spend the morning writing social media posts for the upcoming month or designing a slide deck for your next presentation. That's all maker time. Manager time, on the other hand, is when you get shorter, quicker tasks done in batches. This is where your meetings, phone calls, and video chats get scheduled. I highly recommend scheduling your maker time in the morning and your manager time in the afternoon. Whether you're a morning person, a night person, or somewhere in the middle, we all experience the day in three energy phases, a peak, a trough, and a rebound. The peak is our highest energy point of the day. The trough is our lowest energy point, and the rebound is not quite as high as the peak, but it's up there. If you're a morning person, you experience the day in this order, peak, trough, and rebound. But if you're a night owl, you experience a rebound, a trough, and then your peak. Either way, afternoon means low energy for everyone. That's why splitting your day into maker and manager time is so effective. Set aside your mornings for concentration and creativity and use your afternoons for brainstorms, communication, follow-ups, and so on. Some of us are makers and some of us are managers. 
but a lot of us have to be makers and managers in the same day. That can create a lot of challenges because the type of concentration you need to be a maker is a lot different from the flexibility and context switching that it takes to be a good manager. And with this hack, you have time for both. And they don't have to be half days either. You can dedicate a whole day to being a maker or a whole day to being a manager. Let me know in the comments if you spend more time being a maker or a manager. Speaking of the afternoon energy slump, let's talk about productivity hack number six. Beware of 2.55 p.m. Seriously, I know it sounds kind of funny, but research has shown that 2.55 p.m. is the lowest energy point in the day for most workers. That's when you're falling asleep at your desk, zoning out in meetings, and reaching for another cup of coffee. If that time seems to be okay for you, look at other points in your day. Do you experience an energy dip about seven hours after you wake up? That's when the low energy point hits. So if you're waking up at, say, 6 a.m., your low energy point might be closer to 1 p.m. The point is, I encourage you to pay attention to your energy levels in the afternoon. You might notice that you actually feel pretty good at 2.55 p.m. Or you might notice that you're dragging. You might find that you feel totally depleted around 1 p.m. or 3. Regardless, when you start to realize when your energy valley is, you can start to plan around it. So how can you plan for this energy dip? If you know you typically want to nod off around 2.55 p.m., then grab an iced coffee or make a cup of tea at 2.15 so you've got time for that caffeine to kick in right when you need it. You can also plan tasks for the afternoon that require low levels of analytical brain power, like sorting files, addressing envelopes, or processing receipts. You might even use this energy dip for brainstorming when your inhibitions are lower and you're more open to new and wacky ideas. And finally, take a break. Stare at something other than a screen. Rest your eyes. Go for a walk. You deserve it. That leads me to our seventh and final productivity hack. And it's pretty simple. I want you to take three breaks. That's it. First, take a lunch break. Yes, an actual lunch break at least 15 minutes long away from your desk, your computer, and your phone. Even though eating lunch and catching up on social media can feel like a break, your brain can't tell the difference between work and scrolling social media. We process both the same way. So put down your phone and really enjoy your break. Then schedule a quick break sometime before lunch and sometime after lunch, mid-morning and mid-afternoon. As much as we would like to believe that we can be endlessly productive, at some point, the law of diminishing returns kicks in. After about 90 minutes of concentration, we start making more mistakes, and then we start getting frustrated because we're making mistakes. So just save yourself the trouble and take a break. I actually have a great episode of the It's About Time podcast all about taking better breaks, so I'll be sure to link that down in the description. All right, now that you've got seven productivity hacks, don't forget. In order for these productivity hacks to make a lasting impact, you need to know why you're doing them and what goals you're working toward. You have to get clear on what matters most First, when your plan is based on your values and priorities, everything else falls into place. I have a resource called the Heart Method Roadmap that can teach you how to use time management with intention. Get yours now via the link in the description below. So what did you think about these seven productivity hacks? Are there any that you're going to start using right away or some that you already know and love? Let me know down in the comments below which one you're trying first. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next video. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.